me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Give me that green light Give me that green light name Welcome to Greenlight Maine for a winner's mentoring session. Here on Greenlight Maine, we are helping to grow Maine's economy one dream at a time. I'm Don Gooding with MCED, and I'll be moderating this discussion between entrepreneur and mentors, as I often do in my day job. With us in the studio is Tyler Frank of Garbage to Garden, as well as three mentors who are going to help Garbage to Garden to address one of the most challenging business issues that they're facing. So I'm going to introduce the three mentors in just a couple of minutes. But first, Tyler, congratulations on advancing to the next round of Greenlight Maine. Thank you very much, Don. We're definitely among an elite group and uh, glad to be here. Well, good. So uh, I know you have an awesome business, and we're going to see the pitch about it now because uh, just as a reminder of what business that you're in, and your colleague Kendall Hinckley gave the pitch then, just so you're not confused about, is this the same person doing the pitch? No, it's not. So <laughs> take it away. Kendall? How do you compost? Well, I'll show you how I do it. I put my food scraps in the bucket, put this bucket on my curb on garbage day, and I'm done. I'll get a clean bucket back and a bag of compost if I request it. I compost with Garbage to Garden, a curbside composting service based in Portland, Maine. Composting like this saves me money on garbage bags, uh, it's good for the environment, and it's easy. You join at garbagetogarden.org and grab a bucket at a partner location like Hannaford Supermarkets. We started three years ago to find an easy alternative to backyard composting, and what we found was an even greater need. See, the state of Maine produces 4,800 tons of garbage a day, and we have 67% of the needed landfill space for the next 20 years. Fortunately, 40% of our garbage is compostable. Garbage to Garden was bootstrapped by my business partner, Tyler Frank, who started with $350, a pickup truck, and a regular table at the farmer's market. Uh, today, we service 4,000 residential and commercial accounts, including uh, one in seven uh, curbside households in the city of Portland. We're growing by an average of 150 households per month. And last fall, we became profitable. Our current revenue annualized is three quarters of a million dollars. So our business is just like a trash company. The difference is we support farmers instead of landfills. We also take a unique approach to encouraging people how to compost. And it's part customer service and part social movement. Enter the first part. The G Panel. The G Panel is our proprietary software built in house and it automates personalized service. It's how we run our operation and it's also how our program can scale to other cities and other states. The second part social movement. We engage our community network to drive referrals through a volunteer program and things like composting for events and businesses and schools. Our team of 10 includes myself, Tyler, a web developer and our operations team. We're looking for minds and resources to expand our business to the next level and Greenlight Maine perfectly fits into that goal. Right now, we're on the crest of an organics boom and in 20 years, compost bins will be everywhere. Within our current footprint, our business can triple in size and we're getting requests from people in other cities and other states looking to bring garbage to garden to where they are. My question for you is, how do you get a city to compost? Because I say you make it a no-brainer. Well, that was such a great pitch. Uh, anything new, major developments in the six months since you've uh, done that pitch? Yeah, actually. Uh, well, Kendall nailed the pitch, first of all. And, yes, she uh, did. I think that um, you know the, the social movement connection to uh, our communities allows us to get a lot of uh, participation quickly and that's what we're uh, hoping to accomplish actually in a new location um, very soon we're working well, on that that's a very exciting development so now it's time to introduce the mentors but there's going to be an exciting twist because you know that great ideas can come from anyone you know it's not about credentials it's about creativity so I'm just going to let you know their first names. So you're not going to know whether or not they're a corporate attorney or a smart consumer. Uh, so with that, 
I'd like to first introduce Devin. Devin, great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you. Well, uh, I, I hope you're ready to ask some good questions. I'm excited to ask some good questions. <laughs> Absolutely. And next we have Alex. Thanks for being here, Alex. Uh, thrilled to be here to discuss garbage to gardens. Okay. And then finally, we have Danielle down at the end. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I'm hoping you're ready to bring all the resources you have yeah. to help Garbage to Garden grow their business. Absolutely. Okay. So, well, there you have it. You have a winning entrepreneur. You have three people who are ready and willing to help. And so we're going to be back after a short break to talk about the very real business growth challenge that Garbage to Garden is facing. And we'll be back here on Greenlight Maine. Please visit greenlightmaine.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. My name is Leslie Morissette, and I'm the founder of Gramtastic Connection. We provide free laptops, tablets, internet access, allowing the children to have uninterrupted education. We receive up to five new requests each week with sometimes 30 children at a time waiting for our equipment. And sadly, sometimes children pass away while waiting for our computers. People are interested in recycling their old equipment. You can drop it off at any of the nine Moody locations throughout the state. So Moody's truly is a company who cares. It doesn't take much to change your entire travel experience. It's more than a flight. It's the whole trip. Connect to your world with daily nonstop flights to Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Baltimore, Charlotte, and New York City. Portland International Jetport. Way better. Please join us to find vital information on our website at greenlightmain.com and be a part of our vibrant community on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Together, we're building Maine's future, one dream at a time. We're back at Greenlight Maine with a winning entrepreneur and three anonymous mentors all ready to dig into a challenge to growth. So, Tyler, Obviously, your company's seeing a lot of success out there. So what's the current business challenge that you'd like us to talk about today? Well, um, we are right now, as I mentioned, gearing up to open a satellite location in another state, mm -hmm. which is really exciting. Very exciting. And um, assuming success in our satellite location, what's going to be our path to growth? Is it going to be franchising or more company-owned locations? Oh, interesting. That's yeah, so grappling with classic, that. yeah. So, Devin, lots of questions to ask. What's the first one you'd like to ask there? The first one's definitely about that growth decision and how you chose that new location. So what gave you the inspiration to say we're going out of state? Uh -huh. um, and what are, what are the characteristics of that location that got you excited about it? Sure. Mm -hmm. I think our model could work in a lot of locations, but it definitely works best in an area where you can build a lot of root density. Um, you know, we've became profitable in Portland over time by adding stops to existing routes. And so, um, you know, we're looking into uh, uh, the Boston area because that is uh, a, a large market, about mm -hmm. 25 times larger than what we're currently in. And not too far away. Great. Exactly. Alex. Uh, well, to many, composting is a little bit of a foreign concept. I'm, I'm curious how you describe your customer base. Mm. Well, um, our customer base tend to be initially, you know, uh, higher educated people, people that are more concerned for the environment naturally. Mm -hmm. um, but I would describe it as uh, broader than that. I think that um, as time goes on, you know, the community kind of gets educated by seeing buckets all over the street. Mm -hmm. You know, we make it so easy that there's really, you don't have to be an environmentalist to compost anymore. Ah, um, yeah. You know, it can even save you money on your garbage bills. So, um, you know, it, it takes a connection to the community and, and building that awareness over time. Uh, to tap into an early majority of participants. Danielle, question. 
Um, yeah, and to Alex's point too, I think your name is excellent. I think you kind of it's tell the name. story yeah, in the name, which helps. Um, I just wonder about scalability. Portland is big in Maine. Um, mm -hmm. We think it's a huge city, but Boston really is big. Yeah. So do you feel that you've established those management systems and accounting systems mm. and kind of that infrastructure to really grow into a, a big community like that? Yeah, I think that's what we've been, you know, steadily working on, and I, of course, it's always a work in progress. Yeah. Um, we've added a couple new uh, team members that are really stars in the last few months, and that's accelerated our progress on on systematizing some of that and preparing for this. Uh, our software that automates most of our operation is is nearing completion, and that's going to be a key factor in our success in our next location. I get to ask a question too. So. A lot of franchises have an operations manual. You basically do the checklist. Have you gotten to that point yet, or is it pretty much dependent on the software for replicating the systems? Well, certainly a manual goes with that. In the software, you know, there's also a training resources, a training mm -hmm. library for, for field operators and the different ah. positions. But uh, for the, the manager of the, of the business, um, you know, we don't have the manual completed yet, but we have all the pieces of it that we need to, we're working on bringing together. And you know, this is probably another year out before we would be franchising if we are. So yeah. um, that's got to make sure it that, works first. Want to make sure right. we're going in the yeah. right direction. It's important. Definitely. Yeah. And the franchising piece is interesting because it's such a critical strategic decision that a lot of companies do decide to make to help escalate growth more rapidly. Mm. What I'm curious about is if you do decide to go down the road of franchising, sort of what is that big selling point and the most important thing that you can say to a potential franchisee that you should sign on with us? Um, is it brand? Is it that operations? Is it your ability to scale quickly? Really, what is it that's mm. in it for the franchisee? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if, if you accept that this is a time when uh, you could be first to market in curbside composting, something that is going to be inevitable, and you look at the fact that we have been uh, more successful than any other independent subscription-based model at getting people to join the program because of clean buckets, because of uh, you know, our, our volunteer program and, and connection to the community, um, we've got that figured out. And also, a franchisee wouldn't need to repeat or duplicate everything we have because we can manage the customer service and the software support uh, from Portland. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it may becomes a pretty turnkey operation for the franchisee. Very interesting. Alex, next question to you. Uh, curbside uh, composting seems like such a curiosity. It's obviously a unique and different concept, probably not unlike recycling cans and newspapers were when they were first introduced. Mm -hmm. Do you foresee in the future a possibility of actually becoming so normal, as normal as bringing your newspapers and your cans and bottles out there? Can it be that big of a market? Yeah, absolutely it can. Uh, I think that you know, it's, and we're going to see both uh, uh, large subscription programs like what we've already been building and also more and more towns saying we want to pay for this for everybody um, just because it's such an, a necessary social need. Uh, so I think that, um, you know, we won't get everybody on our own, but eventually with the aid of, of governments, we'll certainly have everybody composting. It's, it's something that we all need to do. Danielle, time for one more quick question. Sorry. Um, do you rely currently, does your budget rely on town subsidies, Portland subsidies? Not at all. Nope. Um, we've never had any kind of subsidy from any town. In fact, uh, we, all of our revenue comes from uh, subscription uh, fees for our uh, participants. And um, we do some commercial hauling on the side also. Um, and it's it's really just the, uh, like I said, the density buckets per hour that makes it make financial sense and is makes that, it profitable. Is there an opportunity there to get that, or? Yeah, yeah, I think there is. And uh, you see, um, you know, there's organic waste bans uh, that have been enacted, uh, like la organic waste landfill bans in Mass in Vermont, and it's been discussed in Maine. And there's and we're going to have to go to their ideas now. Okay, <laughs> so Devin, mm -hmm. you get first shot. Initial thoughts on the uh, do-it-yourself or franchise question. Yeah, I mean, the mission that you have is so critical since food waste is such an issue. Mm -hmm. My question is that I think both franchising or working on, it on your own can potentially work, but only if you're able to really narrow in on who your core customer is. Is it a municipality? Is it a school like Kendall yeah. mentioned? Is it direct-to-consumers? Alex, quick first thoughts. Well, franchising to me is a really delicate uh, direction. And uh, at your stage, when you're uh, looking at one or two units, 
I, I feel like um, I would be really focusing on uh, your infrastructure, what your game plan is, and uh, hope that you get to a point where you have enough units so that a franchise possibility might exist in the future. Danielle, quick first thought. <laughs> um, I just think that you, to Alex's point, you really need to investigate the grant opportunities and the town subsidies, and you need to put that in place with your current footprint before you start scaling up. Okay, so we've heard from our anonymous mentors. What are your thoughts about how to address this challenge? Feel free to post those thoughts on Twitter at hashtag GreenlightMaine or on our Facebook page. We'll be back after a break with our entrepreneurs reaction to these great ideas here on Greenlight Maine. We help businesses increase sales. We help increase sales by providing business owners, chief executives, and marketing managers with effective advertising strategies and marketing campaigns. We help businesses increase sales by providing practical advice and tactical plans that are meaningful and measurable. We can help your business increase sales. Find out how at SutherlandWeston.com. Hi, Ross here for Dice House Restaurant. Everyone's having meetings. Mean about this, means about that, mean about meetings. How ridiculous is that? Got a meeting? Meet at Dice Arts Broadway. Look at my chart. Dice Arts Broadway's got three meeting rooms. A big one, a bigger one, and an even bigger one. And the big one and the bigger one can combine to be even bigger than the even bigger one. How ridiculous is that? Great food, great service, and a great place for your meeting. Dice Arts Broadway. Big and bigger's bigger than even bigger. DiceArts.com. Ridiculous. I'm not thinking about health insurance all the time, but when I do, I know that Community Health Options is there for us. Whether we're getting a checkup, a test at the lab, or we're in the hospital, Community Health Options is there every step of the way. They'll help you get the most of your prescription benefits and manage any ongoing conditions so you can think about other things. Member-centered Community Health Options. Sign up or re-enroll for 2016 at healthoptions.org. If any of you in our television audience has a big idea, we encourage you to visit GreenlightMaine.com for a list of resources and information about starting your own business. Welcome back to Greenlight Maine. We've heard from our entrepreneur about their challenge. We've heard some initial thoughts from our mentors. So, Tyler, which of these many ideas would you like to continue discussion on? Yeah, well, um, I think that I, I'm thinking that it makes more sense probably to you know, maybe not jump into franchising. Like we're going to have a one location, mm -hmm. and then if we're successful there, we could do another location still within our range. Um, and that seemed to be the the suggestions I was getting that you know not to rush into something that's a big difference. Well, rushing it, it does go by very fast, right? You know, when you're doing your company, and all of a sudden, two years have gone by. Yeah. So um, any thoughts uh, from you about how big um, he needs to be, be before he really gets into that fork in the road? I think it's less about size and more about are the right systems in place? Is your brand strength there? Because mm -hmm. those are the kinds of questions that a potential franchisee is really going to want to know about. Mm -hmm. Um, can you provide them that kind of value? Um, and conversely, do you even want to have to deal with the risks potentially to your brand? Because that puts a lot of responsibility on the franchisee to continue elevating garbage to garden. Yeah, I, that's exactly what I was, hits on what I was concerned about mm -hmm. because franchising seems like it's a great way to get expansion capital quickly, to bring mm -hmm. in, you know, management talent for all these operations. Um, but, you know, you worry about like kind of losing, lo losing the soul of it potentially or, uh, you know, being more difficult to manage or... You, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. I Reflecting on this question, if you think about the big franchises like McDonald's or Coke bottling, um, if you look at the history of those companies, actually, they did a little bit of both. As, as I recall, you know, they, they did some franchising, they had some of their own, and then they made sure that down the road they could actually acquire those franchises if they had the right capital to be able to do that. Oh, yeah. So that's interesting. Um, so any more thoughts or questions about the, the business challenge going forward? It's been my experience that potential franchisees are really going to want to see more than one or two successful mm -hmm. units. Mm -hmm. But 
uh, and that could mean three or five or ten. But honestly, uh, I don't think it's ever too early to start thinking about and discussing the idea. And as you're doing your sort of normal growth, to allow that dialogue to run parallel. So that when and if you ever get to that time, you've been talking about it for years. Mm -hmm. I think that signifies what a young entrepreneur should be thinking about. It's asking all those questions early on. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with that, I think it's time to reveal who our anonymous mentors are. And since you had the last word, Alex, I'm actually going to start with you this time and tell, tell Tyler about uh, what you do. Uh, my name is Alex Fisher. I'm the uh, founder and chief creative officer of Planet Dog, which is a local manufacturer uh, and marketing and advertising company in Portland, Maine. How about that? Yeah. And then seated next to me here. I am Devin Cook. I'm the executive producer for the Inclusive Innovation Competition at MIT, so right near your future location. Oh, so yeah. we focus on finding entrepreneurial and innovative solutions to challenges that workers face in the face of digital technology. Mm -hmm. And it's a very critical issue for our time. I do some entrepreneurial yeah. strategy consulting as well. So this yeah. is something really exciting to learn more about. Yeah, and, and you live in Maine. And I live in Maine, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want me to do so. <laughs> and then finally, at the end there. I'm Danielle Moody. I work with Moody's Collision Centers. And um, I've been officially with Moody's for five years, but I started when I was like, middle school detailing cars. <laughs> yeah. And I've run the gamut. So Hands lots of experience. On. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And thanks to uh, Moody's for being a great sponsor of Greenlight Maine and supporting the, uh, the entrepreneur community that we've got here. Well, great. So now that we know the identities of our three mentors, it's time for a short break, and we'll be back with some final thoughts about the challenge that you're facing here on Greenlight Maine. Okay, great. As a leader in Maine and New England in providing integrated accounting, consulting, and tax services to clients large and small, the team at MacPage has proven to provide innovative solutions to help us better meet our clients' needs. We enjoy the people we serve and care about the work we do. The success of our business is based upon our ability to develop quality relationships, one client at a time. MacPage. Accessible. Approachable. Accountable. My name is Leslie Morissette, and I'm the founder of Gramtastic Connection. We provide free laptops, tablets, internet access, allowing the children to have uninterrupted education. We receive up to five new requests each week, with sometimes 30 children at a time waiting for our equipment. And sadly, sometimes children pass away while waiting for our computers. People are interested in recycling their old equipment. You can drop it off at any of the nine Moody locations throughout the state. So Moody's truly is a company who cares. Please visit GreenlightMaine.com to follow the progress of your favorite entrepreneurs and find information and resources about becoming an entrepreneur yourself. We're back for some final thoughts here on Greenlight Maine. And I want to start by thanking our three mentors who have come on the show because mentoring is such an important thing for entrepreneurs, as you know from yeah. the Top Gun program, right? Yeah, that and score. Yes, exactly. So. Uh, mentors, Devin, in a 20-second nutshell, some final thoughts for uh, Tyler here? Yeah, I mean, this is such an important decision, the franchise model versus the sole proprietorship model. I think if you want to look at some examples of other franchises that may have worked mm. or not worked, check out 1-800-JUNK, Got Junk. That's a case study that we read in business school. Ah. Um, and I think you've got a fortunate situation where your customers are going to be very socially minded, so they'll also have in the best interest of the company to do a great job. Great. Thanks. Alex? I'm a big fan of the concept. Uh, I think you're a real pioneer. Uh, I'm curious, are there, is there a big player in this industry 
that you're up against or uh, your competitors, sort of young startups kind of like you and you're all kind of feeling out the uh, So the think arena. about the competition. We'll just leave it at that. Danielle, some final thoughts? Um, I'll just go back to what we were saying in the beginning is the name is just awesome. It really is. And I think that right there is going to be your key to franchising. So you need to grow your name, grow your brand, as Devin touched upon, and just establish that um, customer relationship. And then that's what you're going to be able to franchise. Mm -hmm. Great. So, Tyler, lots of things to think about coming out of this conversation. Yeah. Is there any one thing that jumps out as something you're going to be focusing on going forward? Well, uh, I'm just going to focus on keep doing what we do best to serve our customers and pulling together the operations manual for mm -hmm. a potential franchise or yeah. just for expansion and just really knock it out of the park with our, uh, our next location this year. Right. So we are all looking forward to watching how it goes, not only here in Maine, but also with this new location. So congratulations on all the progress that you've made so far. And uh, also good luck in the next level of the competition here on Greenlight Maine. Um, I'm sure you're a very strong contender. Oh, that does remind me, though. Uh, so speaking of the, the rest of the competition, uh, for those of you in the audience, make sure that you watch our Facebook page and greenlightmain.com for announcements about the rest of the competition. So here's how it's going to go. We're going to have a live event to narrow down our 13 competitors to two. And then that'll be followed by the final two weeks of our online competition where you can vote online and help pick a wild card. And then those three companies are going to come together for a televised championship event. And one of those three companies is going to walk away with $100,000. So we're also going to let you know when we start accepting video pitches for next year's competition, something to look forward to. And remember, if you want to start your own business because you've been inspired by all you've seen, greenlightmain.com has lots of resources for you. So keep thinking big and keep the positive feedback coming, especially for the companies that you see on the show, because together, the Greenlight Maine community is helping to grow Maine's economy one dream at a time. Greenlight Maine has been brought to you by Moody's Collision. Creating incentives for our coworkers forges the teamwork that makes the dream work. Greenlight Maine would not be possible without the support of all of our corporate sponsors. Thank you. Prize money for Greenlight Maine provided by Maine Accelerates Growth through a grant by the Maine Community Foundation. Outreach and community engagement in partnership with Maine Startup and Create Week. Furniture for Greenlight Maine provided by Thomas Mosier. Handmade carpets for Greenlight Maine provided by Mugalian Rugs. Broadcast facilities provided by the New England School of Communications at Husson University. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Give me that green light. Give me that green light, Maine. Greenlight Maine has been a paid-for presentation by the Portland Media Group.